Hey everybody, how's it going? It's your boy Saint CJ and welcome to another episode of the Overcomer series. Thank you again for tuning in. Before you do anything, make sure to like, comment and subscribe. And today I'm very excited to introduce you to a great friend of mine. Introduce yourself, bro. Yeah, man, Faith Talks. What's good? What's good? Cheese, cheese, cheese. So just before we're about to start, we're just going to open with a prayer. It's always good too. And then we're going to get right into it. So let's do it. Happy Father, I thank you for another day. Thank you for your grace. I thank you for your constant mercy and faithfulness towards us, Lord. I just pray you will take control of this conversation today. You'll take control of this uh, whole episode, Father God. I pray, Lord, that your words will speak beyond man's understanding, beyond man's words. And I just pray, Lord, that you anoint every single word spoken. May you get all the glory and take all the honor. And all those that don't know you, may they receive you today. And those that do know you, may they be encouraged and stirred to have greater fellowship and communion with you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So yeah, bro, tell the people about yourself, what you do, and all that good stuff. Yeah, man, cool. What's going on, everyone? I hope you're good. My name is Emmanuel. I am a YouTuber. I'm also, um, I'm an entrepreneur, so I'm into property. I've got a charity that I set up in Sierra Leone, providing um, sustainable development and supporting the spread of the gospel in my grandmother's village so that's what i do but most importantly i'm a child of god you know how it goes this guy is such a natural man so you say you know he's a youtuber the way he does it he's just a natural with the camera like <laughs> Bro, this, you, got, you got to come into the lens you know what i'm saying like this is what they taught us in youtube <laughs> you have to teach me you know this is the guy this is the youtube guy that's the teacher uh, still teach uh youtube tutorial. don't worry bro get back on the channel soon bro <laughs> amen 100 yeah come on come on <laughs> So yeah, tell the people, I guess, you know, a bit more about your journey. Like, how did you come to know the Lord? Like, what's your story? Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, so my, my story is really a story about, it's a story about losing yourself, being found by God, and then finding myself. So, mm -hmm. you know, I've been a Christian since I was 16. I'm 20, well, almost 24 years old now. So coming mm. up to seven, eight years. And when I, when I was younger, I grew up in a, in a church going household. But I myself didn't have a relationship with the Lord. And in fact, I didn't want a relationship with the Lord because from my perception, being a Christian looks so dead. <laughs> Literally, it just looks so much dead. And even if I wasn't hearing what being a Christian actually was, for me, what I saw of it, I was like, you know what? I don't want that. In fact, I want the things of the world. And specifically, what I mean is I wanted to be respected. I wanted to have money. I wanted to have the girls. Do you know what I mean? Like That is literally... <laughs> what was driving me as a young man. But even though it looks confident to want to run after those things, it really comes from a root of insecurity and, and, and low self-esteem because you start looking for things that you think you need to give yourself value, mm -hmm. to give yourself value in other people's eyes. So these times you might look like the most confident person because you're coming into school with Adidas tracksuits, LV belts at the age of like mm -hmm. 14, 15, God knows, why we're even putting that pressure on ourselves at that age to have money when yeah. we haven't even done our GCSEs, like it's crazy. But that was what I thought if I had, then I would have value in the eyes of people. And the funny thing is, I actually had it, like for a brief period of time, I had that, like I had the money, I had the clothes, I had the girls, you know? And it was, it was like, I needed it because you could, obviously you could see I'm quite dark skinned. I've been dark skinned before, being dark skinned was sexy, do you know what I'm saying? Before they was doing melanin popping, back in school, when when the lighties like CJ were the ones that everybody wanted. Oh, and dark skinned, so you remember you remember, I know you remember, I know you remember it. You know, I've been dark skinned from way back then. So of course hey, I used to get bullied yeah. a lot for my skin colour. Like the lights would go wow. off in the movie. Bro, literally the lights would go off when we're watching the movie and people would be like, Oh, where's E Man? Where's E Man? It's like, calm, you didn't you didn't have to deal with that. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? You didn't have to deal with that. And things like that fostered insecurity, fostered anger, fostered pride in, and, and wanted to then earn my respect from the world, earn my respect from people. And that's why I then turned to, um, turned to the wrong things, like turned to illegal activity, like fraud, drugs and things like that to try and get the money to get the respect. Mm. But then when I had it, it was empty. Yeah. Literally, it, it, okay. like, this is what I've been waiting for. And is that it? Yeah, like, is bro, bro. it? And I got to a place where I thought, you know, if I literally at the age of 15, 14, 15, I'm thinking, if I die tomorrow, well, like, what was it all for? 
literally yeah. like what, yeah. what meaning has my life had if it's all up so i'm now thinking to myself do you know what nah scratch that i don't i don't want the money i don't want the girls i want something of substance mm. but i didn't know what was of substance substance to get what i mean so i'm now in a place where i'm thinking i need meaning but i don't know how to find it Amen. so cool what's the first thing that a lot of people do when they want to find meaning in life they turn to religion like they you know they start getting into spirituality and stuff like that so i'm like okay cool i'm gonna start exploring now mind you christianity was the last place i was trying to go the last place wow really, ian like i said to you i knew christians well i knew people that called themselves christians and they were doing as much dirt as i was wow. so it's like if if, we, if you and i are the same and you call yourself a christian then your jesus must be useless then <laughs> like like what what impact does he make so that's the last place i was going to go bro even just to keep it but the person that i lost my virginity to was a pastor's daughter do you get what i mean like these, wow. these, these are the kind of things <laughs> these, so what i'm telling you the examples i had were not attractive example well they was attractive but not attractive in the way they should have been attractive yeah like, you yeah. know so so that led me to just starting to look into other religions so oh. bro i researched islam I researched Judaism. Yeah. I researched Sikhism. I, I looked into them. But something about and just left, left it, it was still quite empty. I can't lie to you. It was still yeah. very, very empty in core. Because I saw, I saw a set of rules and I saw, I saw a set of, of behavior systems that didn't get at the heart of meaning for me. Yeah. Now, when it span is when there was a youth group that I used to go to every now and again at a church near my house. Because the youth group, they had... They had yell, they had vibes, you know, it was fun, in it? So it was there. But at this youth group, yeah. they also had a Bible study. I never went to the Bible study, but I was always at the youth group. And then one week, the youth pastor invited me to come to the Bible study. Now, this is crazy. And I go into a bit more detail on this on my channel, because I'm actually dropping my testimony video. For, like, what day is it? Um, Sunday 24th, I think, something like that. Um, so you can watch more of it there. But what happened was, I get invited to come to this Bible study. That day, I'd already planned to go to a girl's house. Like, mm. let's say we're going to study, innit? So, I was going to go to her house now. And then I remember getting to the bottom of the road. Her house is this way. The bus of her house is this way. The church is that way. And in a very prophetic way, I just felt like I couldn't do that thing again. And I wow. literally turned my back and went to the church. Wow. Then I heard the gospel. I heard that we have all sinned in God's eyes, but because of God's love, we have a way of being forgiven of our sin and not facing God's punishment if we believe in Jesus. Come on, man. And that was substance. That was the substance I was looking for. And from that evening, I confessed my sins, all of it. I repented. I turned to follow Jesus. I blocked that girl on BBM because I was not trying to go back down that way. And I've been following Jesus ever since. So that's how I came to know Christ. <clears throat> wow, man. Wow. That's powerful. Like, especially mm. when you said about the whole, like, substance. Because I think that is so true that in the world we think that everything we live for is, has substance, it has worth. But really, any, a life without Christ does not have substance. It doesn't have real worth because it's so temporary. Like, mm. when you have a life full of, with Christ, you know your life is eternal. And that's the mm. most that you ever have is an eternal life, a life that has that really, when you die, it will live on in a good way, in a way with the Father, you know. But if you live a life without Christ, your life on the world will have a lack of substance. And then when you eventually go to see God, it's not going to have substance as well because you're not going to be with the Father. Like, I'm mm. still true. So, yeah, man, that's real. That's real deep. Mm. Now, thank you for sharing that. And it's real. Cause I think a lot of young people can resonate to that. Like I, I can resonate to everything you just said because I was the same guy, you know. Mm. And for me, I just thought Christians were, I don't know, they just, I just found them jarring. Like, I, just found them, like, I just found them jarring. Like, you always, oh, come to me, come, 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 oh, come to my con concert, come to this. And I was like, oh, I don't want to hear it. But yeah. it's so funny how God switches us, changes us, and now we become yeah, racist for it. You know what I mean? And bro, literally, that's the thing. The crazy thing about the walk is that when you're young and you see Christians saying, come here, come here, come to this, come to that, you're thinking, why do I need to be in the yeah. church to, yeah. to experience this? Like, yeah. And actually, Jesus comes into us. The Holy Spirit comes into us. Mm -hmm. It's not just about us coming to 
that that worship night or coming to yeah. the youth group. Yeah. The Holy Spirit comes into us and we go yeah. out. Do you yeah. know what I'm saying? We go yeah. out. Like you were saying, bro, me and you, you we're them, we're them neeks that people <laughs> that we weren't gonna speak to when we was back in school, but we we're sent out. We're not yeah. we're not yeah. here. We're, just, we're not just here inviting people to come to this display. We're saying, no, come and see the work of God through me. Yeah, yeah. Come and see, come and see God's evident. Come and see that you want to know how God exists? Look at my life. Yes. You get what I'm saying? Like that's, yes. And that's everything that, you're, that the Overcomer series is about. You want to see Amen. God? See what he's done in our lives. Amen. Facts, bro. Facts. Hey, <laughs> you should mm. be the one to, to do the intro, bro. I'm you know pumped, what it's bro. about, I'm bro. Pumped, bro. I'm pumped, I'm pumped, I'm pumped. Because literally, that's, that's, but yeah, man, that's, that's what you're doing here, isn't it? That's this, what it is, bro. Playing, we're yeah. manifesting, bro. See, this is, this guy, me and him are on levels, you know. He understands oh. the vision. Like, he understands it. No, but it's true. It is about that. It is a really about, like, a serious level about people seeing the evidence of God. Because you know you can talk about God and you know God and God and God's blessed me, God's done this, but see it in our lives. Like this thing mm. is not just it's not just Christianese words we're saying because we're Christians. Like it's not like yeah. a thing when you when you have a business and you have to plug the business because you get a commission. It's not like that. Like yes. we're not plugging something here. It's a Come reality that we want to share because how can you keep this goodness to yourself? Like if you know someone can be free, why would you keep uh, keep your mouth quiet and allow them to be bound? If you can see someone yeah. can be blessed, why would you keep your mouth quiet and let them still? Be cursed, like you have to share this because people need it. They really do. Mm. Even when they don't, mm. they don't think they do, they do. Like, let's be honest. It's like when you need a new new car motor and you're trying to deny, I don't need it. I don't need it. It works. It works now. You need a new car motor. Like, your car's yeah. gonna break down if you don't get it. You know. Right. And all you have to do is take it to the garage for free. But you gotta be humble to know you need the garage for That's free. It. But you just gotta be humble. Free. Be humble with it. You gotta be humble with it. <laughs> Because if you ain't humble with it, you're not going to go to the garage. But it's for free. Facts. Facts. Facts, man. So that's powerful. That's amazing. So as a Christian now, you've been saved, what? You said seven, eight years now, yeah? Yeah. Praise God. Praise God. That's a good long time, man. Praise God. It's still younger. Bro, right? it, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. Because you think about it, you're like, bro, like, what, when, I, when I first got saved, what did I expect to be like in seven, yeah. eight years' time? Yeah. Like, yeah. You don't even realize it, man. It just, it just crops up on you. But God is faithful, man. You get me? Yeah, facts, man. I'm even me myself. I'm celebrating five years this year. So, Jeez. Hot, hot minute, man. Hot minute, Christians. Hot That's minute. Amazing. It's mad, and it's funny because you just really don't see how you used to be, man. Like you can remember it, but it's like a distant memory. So, That's being in Christ now, what's the hardest, I guess, struggles you've had to face? Because a lot of times people think that when you come to Christ, all your problems go away. You don't have any struggles anymore. But that's obviously not true. How, mm. what's one of the things or maybe a couple of things you can share the things that you had to really overcome and deal with as being a believer uh, would you like to mm. share that with us yeah that's good man that's that's so good i think as a, as christians we experience two as everyone does but you experience two main struggles you have your internal struggles your external struggles okay. now if you can pattern the internal struggles it will really save you in some of the external struggles yeah yeah if you can work on your character and your faith and the mm. things that you, you can influence when you're faced with trials and temptations in the world, mm. your response will be so much better because yeah. you've got the tools that you need. Yeah. So it's some of the internal internal struggles that I faced, I'd say the main one, the main one is pride. The mm. main one mm. is pride and, and thinking highly of myself and not thinking highly enough of God working mm. through me. Wow. So, Good. you know, as, Christ, as Christians, we don't realize that everything from our salvation to our sanctification to our glorification or like literally us being able, us being saved in the first place us being us sustaining in our walk mm. the fact that we've been christians for longer than 20 minutes and we've yeah. not given up just yet do you get what i'm saying yeah, yeah. and then at the end of the time when jesus comes back for his for his people mm. everything about that is entirely a work of the lord yeah it's 100 percent the work of the lord. To do we that. have no boast in that yeah yeah of course it's me that does the actions but it's the holy spirit that even gives me the desire like that's what that's yes. what philippians 2 says that he works in us to will and desire for his good pleasure mm -hmm. but what we sometimes do is think that it's all about our strength we think that it's all about our ability so we'll have we'll we'll, we'll build up this this proud mentality where we think i can be in i can be anywhere and i won't sin i can do anything and i won't fall mm -hmm. you know or or we'll say i've got this I'm, I'm in this situation and i need to work it out instead of getting on our knees and praying. Yes. Like the same God, the same God that parted the Red Sea with no feature. Do you get what I'm saying? Like there was no collaboration. It was all him. 
mm. as if that's not the same God that lives in us. And we wow. forget that. Wow. So that's the, that's the internal in me. So that internal in me has meant that there have been some external situations that I've been in when I've crumbled. <laughs> wow. I've crumbled. The weight crumbled me. I'll give you an example. Uni. University. First and second year finished me. Finished <laughs> me. Bro, I'm pro. I'm telling you, fam. Freshers week, done. Freshers month, done. All the temptation. I you can relate to that still. Fam. fam, all the temptation. And I'm there thinking to myself, do you know what? I can go to I can go to that that freshers rave and just just dance to the Afro beats. I'm not gonna dance with the girls, I'm not gonna drink and stuff. I can, do you know what I mean? I'm gonna go to the pre's and I'm cool. Bro, listen, by the end of the evening, literally, bro, there were times in first year, by the end of the, by the, end of the night, I was going back to my accommodation. I was not going back alone. Kai, wow. I was going back with somebody that I met that night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, but I was telling myself, no, nah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to the rave, then I'm going to leave at a sensible time. I'm going to go home, wake up for my lectures tomorrow. But then the flesh had other plans. Yeah, yeah. Fair. That's where the pride means that the external situations can crumble you. And as a Christian, when you find yourself walking in sin, you're not comfy. Yeah, yeah. You're not comfortable. You're not comfortable at all. Your heart is grieved. Mm. And it makes you, especially as a man, you'll be there questioning your manhood. Wow. Because you'll be there saying, I'm meant to be a man of God. How am I moving like this? How am I moving like yeah, yeah. like I'm an And you start to question your manhood. And now you're battling. Now you're feeling no. Now you're feeling... Now you're, now, you're, now you're having terrible thoughts about yourself. Your self-esteem is on the ground because your pride. Yeah. Because of your pride. Pride goes so that's, the fall, man. You know what I'm saying? Pride comes from, oh, bro, tell me again. Pride comes before the fool. <laughs> the fool comes after the pride. Where there's pride, there'll be a fool. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But then, so, the, so, so, and the good thing, but the good thing is that, you know, the Bible says if we, are, if we confess our sins, he's faithful to cleanse us from unrighteousness. Yes. So all we need to do is humble ourselves. Fact. literally humble ourselves and say do you know what i'm walking with jesus but i'm not gonna be arrogant about my steps i'm not gonna put myself in compromising positions that are gonna make me do things i don't want to do mm. i'm gonna i'm gonna be at church regularly because i need people to encourage me mm. so i'm gonna throw that i'm gonna throw that agenda about how i can be a christian and not go to church in the bin because the church mm. is what God's given me to hold me down do you know what i'm saying exactly. i'm gonna throw that away so that's one but then as well as that some of the external factors that happen in our lives. I definitely believe that Satan uses them for evil, but God means them for good. Amen. Because as a Christian, Amen. you're going to go through some hard times Amen. and God is going to use them at the end of it to, re to redeem you to him. It's kind of like what we were talking about at the beginning, like before we started filming, how God yeah. will take us through situations for restoration and yeah. to deepen our fellowship with him. Yeah. I'll give you an example. At the end of uni, so my first and second year, let's just put those ones to the side because those ones were a bit messy you know what i'm saying they were, they were messy my third year though i'd now become i humbled myself getting in church leading bible studies and following god the way i should that was the year that i was in a relationship with a woman of god was together for five months beautiful woman of god but after five months she died wow. and we, we had this conversation bro like literally like didn't see it coming was not prepared for it thought i was going to marry the girl <laughs> you know what i'm saying wow. And then she died. But what happened around that time is because I'd learned to lean on God, I was able to run back to him for my support, for my emotional needs, for him to give me the clarity that I needed, to be able to go through a situation like that where someone that's so close to you was just torn away in a blink of an eye. That's... But because I humbled myself, do you know what God said to me? What did he say to you? And he said this through... He said this over and over and over again. He said it through someone. He said it through situations. He said it through his word. He said it through worship. He said, I am all you need. So wow. even if you don't have her, you have all you need. Wow. Bro. I'm all you need. Wow. It's facts. Like literally, bro, if God has said, I'm going to take her because we know that God gives life, he takes life. Yeah. And yeah. she's with Christ now. Yeah. So, so she's enjoying. Do you know what I'm saying? Like she's she's good. But as far as I go, whilst I'm here mourning, grieving, he says, "I'm all you need." That's deep. So if I took her away, it's because you didn't need her. You need me. Wow. And from that, and how did he say that? He said that through his word. Do you know what I'm saying? He said it through testimonies, bro. Do you know how many people got saved after her, after she passed away because of her because they'd heard the testimony of her final words. 
one of the last things she said to her mum, and it was recorded. So her mum told me, we've got it recorded. Not yeah. like documented, not physically recorded, not video recorded, but she said, her mum asked her, are you scared? Because she was about to go into operation. And she says, I'm not scared because I know if I don't come out, I'm going to be with my Jesus. Wow. Um, that's powerful. That's, that's like a mic drop. That's I'm done with the world. Take it, kind of exit. Like, bro, that's literally, those are literally like, like, like moment of the century type words. You get what I'm saying? Like that's 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 a movie, bro. That's a movie. And so many. My best friend got saved from that. He now writes a book called Jump the Fence, helping people uh, jump. People that are on the fence about Christianity, jump the fence and join, join gang. Uh, you know what I'm Other people have got saved through that ministry. Wow. People are DMing me years after saying they heard about her testimony and are coming to Christ. So literally, bro, through uh, through God taking me through this situation, he made me re- lean on him so much deeper, so much tighter, but also look at us, look how much life he's brought from me. It's and we as Christians, we know, as Christians, we know God brings life from death. It's true. That, literally, that's what that's we, that's, whole, that's that's what we believe in. Yeah. That's the whole thing. Literally, he brings life from death. So he did it then, he'll do it again. Do you get what I'm saying? Wow. Wow, so deep, bro. What you said, did just heavy man mm. so I think this makes me think of that yeah I'm even speechless like it's just so deep mm. it is so deep because you think to yourself certain things in life should crush you but they're actually meant to they actually bring you closer to him they actually bring you closer to being more like him you know the fact that her death brought salvation is crazy it's really, really profound. Like, through Jesus dying, all of us can be saved. That doesn't even make any human... How can someone's death, that's heartbreaking, heart-wrenching, bring forth the salvation of everyone? Like, um, crazy, like... And the fact that you said that, what really hit me was, when God said to you, I'm all you need, I realised everything else in life is just, it's just a, a wanting thing, or it's just a convenience, or it's just an additional blessing. We don't really need it. Like, yes, we have friends. Yes, we have family. Yes, we have loved ones. Yes, we have communities. Yes, we have work. Yes, we have all these things. But we don't oh, no. really need it because they're things that we want, we love, and we're grateful for them. But the reality is, I think what even the season of COVID has taught us, the only thing that is really of substance that we really need and it's really going to be consistent is God. We can't lean on anything else because in a moment that job can go. In a moment that community can go. In a moment that person you love can, can go. Unfortunately, and it's heartbreaking, but it shows the only real thing that's that's internal and the only real thing that we need is God. Because when you have God, you have everything else. You have everything else, you know? So yeah, man. God is really, really deep. That's deep. That's real deep. That's facts, bro. And it's it's crazy because you know, when these kind of situations happen, like you said, we, we as Christians, we say God loves us so much. Well, how do we know? Yeah. Romans 5 says he showed his love in that whilst we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Yeah. So we yeah. see God's love through death, but not just through the death, through the death and resurrection. Yeah. So in the same way, when we go through our situations, like how do I know God loves me? He disciplines me so that I'd be, no, yeah. so that I'd be holier. Yeah. How do I know the Lord loves me? He breaks me so that when he builds me up, I lean on him. Wow. How do I know? How do I know that God loves me? He takes away that job so that I can trust in Him for my daily bread, and then He provides. Wow! Huh. Literally, that's that is that is God loving us. That's so. We, so we ask, why is God doing this to me? Why did God let this happen to me? Because He loves you. Wow! Because He loves you. Wow! Literally, literally. Wow! And that's that's a bit deep for some people, you know. Yeah, yeah. This is you know that you know that you know that you've got that milk, you've got that meat. This is like the the, the chewy mm-hmm. thick mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. lamb chop that there's yeah. a big bone to it. It's like, oh that kinda hurt. Like do you know do you know why it is? It's because someone right now will be going through domestic abuse. Yeah. Someone will be going through mental health, um, mm-hmm. mental health illnesses, somebody will be look mourning a loved one, somebody mm-hmm. will have lost their job. And they'll think that these situations, like God works through all the other situations, but my situation, nah, he's not working. Yeah, yeah. Different, it doesn't count. But actually, all of these situations, 
God has taken someone through and dealt with them. Yeah. He's, he's shown his love in all of them. Your situation is not new to him. So mm. when I'm here sitting, like, I'm not, I'm smiling because I'm thinking about God's goodness. Of course, it hurts. They always hurt. They yeah. always, always, always hurt. Uh, but I smile because I know the testimony that's been birthed from it, not yeah. because it was fun. So, in, so I don't want to make it seem like, you know, the situation, whatever, whatever someone's going through is, is light work. It's not light work, but that shows how powerful God is. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. The fact that it's not, it's not small, it's yeah. not easy, and yet God still comes through. But he only comes through if we trust in him. That's the maddest thing. I'll go, somebody else will go through what I went through and not know Christ. They might even come out of, the, come out of it and be fine. But the difference is that they've not been built up in the Lord, in a faith that will last not just this life, the next life. That's the difference. Yeah. So we've got to think, we're not just living for this world. It's true. We're not just living, if we are living for this world, I can't advise you, you know, I've got nothing to say. Do you know what, bro? If we're living for this world, let's lock off the interview. We, you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's pointless. It's pointless. True. It's pointless. True. It's pointless. All we can do is give some motivational speech. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, the, the toughest battles are for the strongest soldiers and then call it a day. Yeah. You realize <laughs> if, that. Yeah. If we're yeah. in Christ, if we're yeah. in Christ, and we say, listen, 2 Corinthians 4 17, mm. for this light momentary affliction is preparing for you an eternal weight of glory. Wow. So when he says light compared to the weight of glory, imagine if your situation is like a thousand, a thousand deep, whatever units you're using, a thousand deep then your glory is like a billion deep. Do you get what I'm saying? It's light and... So if it's, I'm thinking, literally, I'm, I'm there sitting on my side, sitting thinking, right, well, this hurts. What I'm going through right now is cutting me deep. I've been on the floor in tears for days. Days. I released the video on my channel called Suicidal Thoughts, bro. It yeah. came from this season. Wow. It came from this season. I was, I was feeling it, but I remember thinking, well, boy, if this hurts like this, then glory must be sweet. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but again, only if we're living for a better life. Yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah, what you said is deep. Yeah, yeah, man. Wow. Yeah, it's deep, bro. Wow. This is probably one of the deepest, if not one of them, the deepest, deepest episode I've done so far. Mm. Because it's mm. just so profane, like so profound. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just. Oof. Ah, bro, it's all, it's all, it's, it's all gone, man. Don't gas me, bro. Don't gas me. <laughs> no, 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 even, bro. It's just like God is just moving, isn't it? It's just like, it's what you're saying is just. Oof. Mm. It's gonna bring healing to somebody. Mm, 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 Somebody's mm. going through some peak stuff. Somebody's going through some peak and stuff. And they're gonna, and they're gonna share their testimony and give life to someone else. That's how it goes, man. That's how it goes. Facts. It's, you know, um, I was thinking about the Apostle Paul today. And you look at what Paul went through. <laughs> and the joy that he carried. Mm. Uh, it's insane. Like, mm. It's insane to think you're in prison, but you're, you're encouraging the, the saints while you're in chains. You're saying we're free. Wow. Um, come on, bro. If that's wow. not bad. That's not a bar. Come on, like it's yeah. oh man, like you can't match that. You're in chains. You're in chains, and you're saying we're free. Oh my gosh, I can't That's match that. Cool. It was like you know he got he got he got. Is that when he said I've been shipwrecked? I've been stoned. I've been I've been uh, beaten. I've been this. I've been that. I've been that. I know what it is to have little and what it is to have much. Praise be to God. What? Like, how do you say so, how do you say comments of that nature? How? I, just, I, I pray, I pray that we all have revelation like Paul one day. Bro, remember, substance. 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 As in, as in when Paul was saying that, Paul was not ignorant of his situation. Mm. He was just aware of his inheritance. Oh my day, say that again. Reload that, reload that, bro. Hey, you might, have, you, might, you might maybe want to tweet that in a little bit. He, hey, he was not that ignorant. is a bar, bro. He was not ignorant. Oh. His situation. <laughs> but he was aware. Now, now, what's this? Now, what's this? He was aware. 
hey. of the inheritance. Hallelujah. Woo! Someone touch your and say, oh, where are my inheritance? Hey, oh, somebody oh. touch your neighbor. Hey, bro, oh, I'm actually tweeting that. That is a thing. Well, that, is, that, 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 that is a uh, nah joking. Of course I will. Nah, uh, nah, nah, nah. That is, that is mad. It's truth, man. It's that truth. is mad. That is, that is, that is Holy Spirit. That is truth. serious Holy Spirit. It's truth, man. Right? It's truth. That's that's gonna be that's gonna be the quote underneath the subscription. <laughs> so make sure you tag that, tag E man on that one. Yeah, man. Hey, man. Your face talks and going. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, so. I guess to round up, bro, um, the last point I would say is anybody um, that's going through a situation right now similar to yours, maybe bereavement or maybe something like that or just a really hard time, what encouragement would you give them in this season? Mm, 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 that's not what you've been said already. Yeah, I mean, what's been, what's been said already is, is a lot of it, bro. Um, yeah. But something, something that's not been said just yet, I'd say... For, for, every, for every day that you hold on, it's one more day that your situation hasn't broken you. And I don't think we celebrate that enough. Like, wow. that, the fact that holding on in and of itself is massive. Like, it mm. means something, and we should be grateful for that. Wow. Sometimes we're, we, we're always looking for the, and, and rightfully so, we want to see breakthrough. We want to see breakthrough. Now I'm talking to myself now as well. We want to see breakthrough. We want to, we want to see the end result. But just holding on yeah. is a victory. It's a daily victory. Yeah, so good. And God tells us, you know, to pray for our daily bread. Mm. So that means every single day he'll give us what we need. Yeah, so good. Every single day. So that day, you had what you needed. If you're following Jesus in that day, you had what you needed. So and it might, not have given, it might not have been what you wanted, or what you thought you needed, but again, God is after your heart, not your happiness. Wow. So he will do things. Oh and it's crazy. Someone, someone, someone's gonna, someone's gonna say, ah, oh, no, nah, man, you're making God sound like he's a tyrant. Da, 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 da. No, because we've seen he's been doing this. God will do things that will make us holy, at the expense of our short-term happiness. That's deep. But that's that's what he wants. That's what he created us for. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes. There are things that are tough that we're meant to cry about. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. there are things that are tough that are meant to make us angry. We saw Jesus get angry. Anger is good sometimes. Anger is good. Using your anger in a, in a, in a bad way is bad. Anger is good. To, be, to feel the things that life brings our way because we live in a fallen world. Yeah. But God will give us what we need to make us holy. And as long as we hang on, we've got to be thankful for that. So Absolutely. be grateful for, keep, for holding on. And because of that, bro, hear this, hear this. Because of that, if your situation hasn't ended you, then don't end yourself. Literally, if your situation, bro, think about it. Most, most suicide, no one, that, no one that has committed suicide was killed by their situation. Yeah, that's deep. They, they, took, that, they, took, that, they took that decision. Their situation can do it. Yeah, I made that choice. So if we're hanging on, that's a victory. Don't do that. Yeah, that's that's what I'd say. I leave it at that. Yeah, that's so good. That's so good. Wow, your situation didn't end you. Wow, it's you know that that it's like that scripture, man. That is very profound to me. The scripture mm. it says, "Uh, you know what can separate separate us from the love of God? No death, no life, no evil, no principality, no this, no this, no this, no this, no this." And I made, made I, re I had a revelation, and I realized that. The only thing that can separate us really from the love of God is ourselves. It's literally us saying, I don't want this anymore. Like, I don't want your love, God. Because that's the only thing the Bible doesn't say. The only thing the Bible doesn't say is yourself. But everything no. else can't separate you from God. Nothing trust else can separate you from God. Bro, trust me. If, if we could separate ourselves from the love of God, we would have done it already. I'm exactly. telling you. Even, even we can't, bro. He will hold on to us. He will, exactly. for, God, for God's faithful people, he will hold on to us. Like, literally... Yeah. Um, Philippians 1 says it. He who began the good work will bring it to completion. I love that. Because, because our endurance is a test of God's faithfulness, not a test of ours. He right. really showed I'm faithful. Listen, my first year and second year at uni showed that I'm unfaithful. Do you get what I'm saying? Right. It showed that I, I'm, I'm not, do you get what I mean? But right. because, God, because God will keep us, he keeps convicting us. He keeps on pulling at us inside, telling us, come back, right. come back. 
Fact. So literally, bro, not even when he when he says nothing, I, I guarantee nothing. Not even not even ourselves. However, yeah, literally, that doesn't mean. However, that doesn't that of course doesn't mean that we don't have any responsibility. Mm. If we, we are responsible for yeah, yeah, feeling yeah. like listen, one thing we're responsible for. We have the truth does not come from within us. Christ, yeah. Jesus is the truth, yeah. and we yeah. need to we need to have the truth filled into us. Yeah. So you've got to be bringing truthful teaching in coming into you. You've got to have God's word coming into you through worship. You've got right. to have God's word coming into you through the people around you that can give life to you. Yeah. CJ, I know you, you know the value of having people speak life into you and you do it to others as well. Yeah. Like you need to have truth spoken into you. Yeah. So we can't isolate ourselves yeah. from fountains of truth, yeah. from fountains of hope, from fountains of peace, of joy. We've yeah. got to have, and that's, that's, I remember when, when, everything was, when everything was mad a couple of years ago, my auntie she called me and said i don't know what to say to you but just listen to worship music wow that bro i'm telling you that is one of the things that saved my life wow because i couldn't i couldn't open the bible and pray i didn't have the energy mm. but i could just lie down just crying and hear you know what i mean just hear in christ alone my hope is found he is my light my strength my rock do you get what i'm saying like i could just sit down and hear and that, that saved my life. That saved my life, bro. It's facts. Like, God will not let go of us. Mm. He'll never let go of us. He's with us, always. Deep, man. Mm. That's literally mm. like he's... Yeah, it's like, I, I just don't get how people can say, like, God is not with me. He's mm. with me. Like, he always is. Just because he don't feel like it, doesn't mean he's not there. That's it, man. He's there. The feeling. Facts. Facts all the way, bro. Say for other feelings. So to conclude, I know this has been a very deep topic and I hope it's brought a lot of healing for those that are believers already. And if you've actually been touched by anything, please contact myself or E-Man. We'd love to pray for you, support you in this yeah. time and just bring forth some encouragement uh, just to know that you're not alone, that God's got you and that we're just here for you and we love you. So please contact us if you have been going through anything really hard in this time. We'd love to pray for you, support you. And also... Uh, for anyone that may not know who Jesus is, you might be listening to all this stuff and being like, don't get it. I've been going through rough stuff. Like, how can God love me? I've done too much. You know, who is this Jesus guy? But you guys just seem like you're crazy, man. You're going through all these problems. Yeah. You know, you should... Uh, Iman, what advice would you give to those people that are just questioning Jesus and faith and everything like that? Mm. Yeah, I'd say that, you know, Jesus is calling you. Mm. He's not running away. He's calling you. Yes. That means that whatever you've done, he knows and he's calling you to believe in him. He's not, he's not calling you to get your act together. Yeah. In fact, he's calling you to admit that you can't. Humility. He wants you to come confess your sin, confess your helplessness, and just reach out for his forgiveness. Amen. As, and, and from there... He will, you know, a lot of people think that God is sitting in his heavenly armchair away, like so far away from us. Yeah. Not really, only really intervenes when it comes to natural disasters and some of the big things where he doesn't want to get involved in the nitty gritty of our lives. Mm-hmm. But if Jesus, God coming down into earth doesn't show that Jesus is trying to come into the messiness of your life. Yeah. I don't know if will. Like he's calling you. So reach out to him. Confess your sin, repent, believe, and you'll be saved. That's it. Yeah, facts. Amen. So that's you watching this right now. Thank you so much, Iman. Thank you for your time as well. Thank you for being on this episode. So yeah, man. Love for having me, bro. Right. I love for doing this, man, bro. Honestly, like just the commitment that you have to this project, to wanting to see other people overcome, bringing people together. Love it, man. Thank, Thank you so much for it, bro. Thank you so much, bro. Um, so for anyone watching this that doesn't know who Jesus is right now, I actually want to give you an invitation to know Jesus. We did, it wouldn't make sense to do this whole episode and record it. Uh, it was fun and we did talk about deep things and we did like, you know, we, we sharpen one, one another. But anyone may, watching this that doesn't know Christ, it wouldn't make sense for you to watch this video, hear what God has done, hear all this word and then leave and remain the same. And you don't need to necessarily be with us physically for you to experience God from your home right now. So what mm. I want to do is I want to lead you in a prayer to accept Jesus Christ. And if you do say this prayer, please reach out to us. We'd love to help you. The next point, obviously, after salvation is discipleship. We'd love to teach you and help you and guide you on your walk with faith. 
now you can actually live out this faith life and even i think iman's working on something about how it is to live as a christian and the step-by-step mm-hmm. guide so he's a really good guy to speak to about kind of your journey and everything and i can help you too so yeah i want to just lead you in a prayer anybody at all and please if you said this prayer reach out to us please hit us up on instagram um, give them your app by the way as well um email. yeah so my app is at emmanuel so e-m-m-a-n-u-e-l ayola a-y-o-o-l-a underscore Jeez. on instagram twitter and on, on youtube it's faith talks you can find me there amazing so i'm just gonna say a prayer for anybody that doesn't know the lord so please feel free to say this with me and i just say lord jesus i'm sorry for the things i've done i'm sorry for the things i'm gonna do i pray from this day that you enter into my heart forgive me of all my sins that from this day until the day i die i will serve you and bring others to know you I believe that you are the Lord and I believe that you died on the cross that I can inherit eternal life. So from this day, may I never be the same. Enter into my heart. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that prayer, you are saved. Yes. Given. It's the best day of your life. There's nothing <laughs> better. And you can you celebrate and know that, you know, if you were to die today, your, you know, your, your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Heaven is your home. Amen. Simple. Amen. So please reach out to us. Please, please, please do. We want to see you. We want to see you. We want to see you develop. We want to see you, you know, grow in the Lord as well. So yeah, uh, and then that's it, guys. So thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. Uh, please again, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Big up E-Man for his time. He's the YouTuber yes, as well. Yes. Fuck your YouTube channel, bro. Yeah, that's it, man. Faith Talks, where we talk faith, come over there, trying to make theology fun and practical for millennials and that. So yeah, man, just come, just... You got videos coming in all the time. Testimony video. I'm not. When, when are you dropping this, bro? Uh, we'll see. <laughs> My testimony may or may not be out by the time this drops, but you know, we'll see. It's, it'll be there soon anyway. So yeah, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, and for anyone that doesn't know already, uh, if you haven't got my book. It's at my website, www.saintcedia.co.uk. You can get my uh, debut autobiography, audio book and ebook. Please support. Yes. Uh, thank God for it. And it already is blessing a lot of people. And also you can check out all my other stuff. I'm working on the music and all that good stuff on my socials and my YouTube and my Spotify. As well, you might be wondering, what's the merchandise he's wearing? So this is my brethren's merch called It's a Jesus Tink. It's a really, really wavy hey. uh, design. Just plug in them because I now haven't plugged them yet. So It's a Jesus Tink. That's them, and this is Alan, mate. This is Governor B's brand. This is I'm thinking, oh yeah, da, 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 da. I'm not a brand sponsor for anybody. I'm just doing this. Uh, if you got, if you got a governor, if you want to, you know, shoot me a little bit of something, I will, I will receive it. I'll, I'll receive complain. it. You know what I'm saying? I won't, I won't complain. You know, it's all good. It's all for the kingdom. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm playing. But anyways, guys, I'm gonna guess gonna round off with prayer, and I always get my guests to end us in prayer. So feel free, man, to end us in prayer. All right, then let's do it. <clears throat> Father God, we just thank you so much for this time, Lord. I thank you for CJ, his ministry, and everything you're doing through him, Lord God, the many talents you've given him, and he's not holding them back. So I just thank you so much for his fervor. And Lord, I pray for everyone that's watched this video, Lord, that they would be blessed that what I've been able to share of my story and how you have worked through me, your story through me, will bring life and healing. I pray for those that, you know, confess their sin to you and call them to you for forgiveness that you would ground them, you know, the Lord, Heavenly Father, place it on their hearts to reach out, that we would be able to walk with them and help them grow. You know, God, so I thank you, praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, bro. Thank you guys Amen. so much. Stay safe. God bless. Joseph. Jesus.